dressed up today. I put my vest on for branding. <laughs> this is our new vest, 19. Uh, What's well, the year on there? 274 is when I started pretending I was a farmer. Um, and um, but this is more our attire for our winery. So we grow. Uh, we we produce wine in our farm for two years now. We do fruit wines. We have. Sparkling, we have still wines, and we have uh, dessert wines, and uh, it's going well. It's a year and a half of sales. We've gotten, in the wine industry, you have to get awards because that means it's really good, even though they give awards up like crazy to anything, I think. <laughs> no, all our awards are legit. <laughs> so we have already a dozen awards, so that's fantastic. So that, I mean, it's half the time, oh, I had a word, oh, I'll just buy the bottle, I don't have to taste it, it must be good. <laughs> kind of a, but um, we, um, we are three miles off our number one interstate or whatever, we are on a side road, we, um, we are not on a main road, so branding has been very important to us because, uh, you, and we, there, there's two roads of going, or, or we do a mishmash, right? There's the wholesale, and you've got to become branded, like Driscoll, or you, you've got to become a name so that people recognize, or at least the buyers recognize and want to buy you. Or you do the other, where you become a retailer yourself and set up a market and ask people to come. And, and um, part of that can be you set up farmer markets and go to the kind of go halfway, right? Go to the customer of the retail again. What we decided was that we wanted the people to come to our farm, and the number one reason was labor. So we wanted them to come pick berries, right? To cut the cost of labor. Or you didn't have labor, so there was no choice. Come, please come and help pick us pick berries. And so we've been doing you pick um, since the late 70s, and we still do you pick. We pick about um, our, our main farm, the picture that I showed, uh, it's uh, 40 acres of berries there, or berries and vegetables for crop rotating. But that whole farm is uh, you pick. Uh, so we do about six to eight acres of strawberries. We do eight to nine acres of raspberries. We do. We only have four acres of blueberries on site, but because we go to town and pick up all our pickers with our own buses, we use those buses during the day and drive to our other farm two minutes away with our. You pick customers for blueberries only for four weeks. They, during the week, we will take them to our other farm site to pick berries. We don't set up, there's nothing set up other than a tent to show them where to go pick the blueberries. But uh, thank goodness we only do it for three to four weeks. If it is a nightmare, the lines get really long and we have our little mini buses and they can hardly keep up. But, but it is a way of uh, picking eight acres of blueberries at the other farm site really helps. But if we can keep them on site, that's what you want to do. So um, our focus was to get people to come to us rather than trying to go to wholesale. And uh, we started Safeway, each store delivery. We, we've done all of those kind of things as well. And uh, all it is is more and more rules that seem to come up for food safety, for audits, for this, for that. And, and I mean, and you never get paid for it. It's just... and. Uh, our story, I guess, would be uh, Thrifty Foods is a company up in our area, and we built a great relationship with them, and they only had a few stores, so it was easy to service them. But, you know, I don't know. Loyalty isn't the same as it used to be, unfortunately. You know, and you try hard to service them with quality and competitive pricing, but sometimes they develop a loyalty somewhere else who maybe then can supply all their 20 stores or, or whatever it is, right? I mean, there's... There's all kinds of reasons behind, behind it. So we have focused largely on bringing people to our farm site. So we still do 65% of everything we sell off our 200 acres is sold off our farm. And so that means there's still 30% or so that is wholesale. And we have one main guy who, who a peddler who's turned into more, of a, more than, he's the distributor for us as well. And he buys from three other farms that, that strictly go wholesale, like Barry Haven, like South Alder, like um, Bergen Farms that are in our area too. That way he can always be providing his customers. But he sells 
to about 50 restaurants. He sells to Thrifty Foods, the Whole Foods. And whenever somebody calls a restaurant or a store, and we just say, sure, we can do that. And then this is what we're charging him, and he does his, um, his cost of, of selling. And, and he takes over those accounts for us. And we list them on our website, all these great restaurants that use our berries to some extent. And um, all of those things cross promote us, and so that's kind of our branding is um, is set up that way. So for us, we're farm sales. We would love to do some farm markets, but it's nice to do only farm markets that are open in the afternoon, evening, because we don't have enough berries until the afternoon, and evening to to do those other things. And then it's all all about labor, but. Um, there has to be enough reason for... So I'm going to talk about why people come to our farm. We're not on the main drag, so we've had to work hard to make them find us. And if they're going to go to all the effort of coming out to your farm, three weeks of strawberry season isn't long enough to develop any <coughs> brand loyalty because they forget by next year where they went. And we would hear that often. Oh, we can't keep... We couldn't find your farm. And then all of a sudden, five years later, they found our farm, like, like years back. So, so that was, that's a, another very important thing. If you're going to go to all the effort of developing brand of them coming to your farm, one, being open longer, which is not a good thing, but you want to be happy to be open longer, and you have to provide more reason for them to come, meaning, yeah, just picking your berries and leaving, that's, that's not long enough for them to make an hour trip out. So we get people all the way from Chilliwack, the whole valley basically, from Chilliwack Hope to, um, to Bowen Island, uh, Squamish is kind of our, our, as well as tourists now. And what we provide is an array of things. We start around Mother's Day now because we have the winery. Uh, people are coming to taste, especially on weekends. And uh, our, we have I mean, a couple of acres of asparagus, so our first crop is asparagus, a little bit of rhubarb, and then summer really starts with strawberries. And uh, somewhere around May 20th to May 30th, depending on, on the weather, our strawberries start. And we're five days a week until June strawberries start, where the UPIC opens up, and uh, we're open continually to uh, seven days a week to uh, Labor Day, September 1st weekend, then we go to five days a week, Wednesday to Sunday, until Christmas. So we're open until Christmas, 9 to 5, uh, selling more than berries. So of course our berries ended early this year because of the beautiful growing season, but generally we have fresh raspberries right till the first week of November. So that's the end of fresh berries. We bring in some, some of our tree fruits at the bottom apples and that kind of thing, a little bit, but we're not into the uh, cutthroat selling for 5-10% markup kind of thing, it just it was a waste of time. So what we focus on is giving them an experience at the farm. So we started with having fresh berries, then it's what can we do with berries, what can we do with all berries. So, so we have a commercial kitchen on site, we make about 100 different products in our kitchen, and um, our biggest, so from fresh berries to IQF berries, which are frozen, and we have a, a large uh, display cooler, a freezer. Uh, we, this year we'll have sold about 60,000 pies. Um, not all of them berries, of course, but uh, apple and peach and that kind of stuff too, but berries is, is the key. We sell a lot of fresh berries. Um, we call it the mile high berry pie, so it's like a meringue pie, that high but with berries and the glaze and stuff. So, so that is another way. It's all about how, how we can sell more berries. Um, in 2012, we did an ex, uh, expansion of our farm to our market is about 4,500 4, square feet. And our winery is um, 2,500, the tasting room, and then another 4,000 behind that in production. But um, the winery wasn't ready and we had hired our winemaker and hired our wine manager and the winery was not going to be up and running in 212 like my budget showed. So what were we going to do with our staff? So we had a, 
uh, we've planted a, uh, we made a connection between the winery and the market, and that's the KB Corral. So we started doing waffles. So first year we did 10,000 waffles, last year we did 20, this year we've done 40,000 waffles with fresh berries on them. And dairy industry likes us because we use whipping cream as well. Um, so it's another way. And the only thing with strawberries is it's the most work of all the berries. You know that, right? You've got to hull them, you've got to wash them, and you've got to slice them. It's a lot of work, strawberries. Or blueberries are so much. I mean, I don't think blueberries are really farmers for those guys because it's just way too easy to grow blueberries compared to, you know, I mean, you get two weeks shelf life. You get, you know, all of those. You have to freeze them in a block and drop the box and you've got IQF. I mean, it's, just, it's so easy. We grow blueberries and it's a great market. I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, it took me a while to get convinced that blueberries was a real berry. Um, and um, so I think one, you've got to have it. So for us, for getting people to come to our farm, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, it really changed for us in 2000 when we decided to do more added value. So we started with jams and syrups, then we went to pies and fresh pies, and we went to shortcakes, um, and, and the list has kept going. So. 2000, we decided, okay, we're everything berries. Think of anything you can do with a berry, we're going to do it. And it's taken us time, but we have, um, the list is, is endless. So everything from jams to syrups. We do uh, donuts with strawberry chunks or blueberry ch pieces in it or blackberry pieces in it. It's, you know, we do, um, okay, we do vegetables. So we grow a lot of corn. That's our crop rotator, sweet corn. We do a corn on the cob. We've got a roaster, but we also do corn pizza. Because now we want to feed people. And corn pizza is, you got to come to the farm to have it. And it's not the shell that we're using. It's <coughs> real corn um, niblets. It's about uh, an inch thick of sweet corn on that pizza with uh, artichokes and peppers and cheese and sauce and stuff. And it's really good, right, Tom? It's excellent. I eat half of your supply. I know you do. <laughs> yeah. And it's, we only make one pizza, and that's the only one. We are. The other thing that we wanted to be was true to who we are. We're not a hot dog hamburger joint, we're not a Coca-Cola joint. What are we? We're a berry farm. And so, you can make good profits and good turnaround with Coke and hot dogs and hamburgers. Don't get me wrong, I mean, they're good money makers, that's why people do them. But it's not who we are. We don't have any meat on our farm, we're a bitch. I mean, we're our culture. So, it's hard for some men. <laughs> but that's what we are. And, and uh, so we've developed more different kinds of food. And, and, um, and I, I, I was telling Matt, you know, the, the positive and the negative is that you need to make a reason for people to come, but that means they're going to stay longer, so you need a bigger parking lot so that because they're staying longer, instead of just a grocery store where they come in, buy, gone, right? They're staying for an hour, two hours, three hours. I mean, depending what time, what season is going, I mean, they could be picking, you picking uh, strawberries and raspberries, or raspberries and blueberries and blackberries, you know, so it's, it's a longer day, and then they have to play, and then they have to go see the animals, and then they have to eat, and then they have to play, and then they have to eat, you know, so, but once they're there, we have to just keep helping them. So, okay, yeah, so it's, um, for us, we want it to be, true to who we were, so being distinctive, we're not everything, we're a berry, and we're willing to do whatever berries is happening. Um, staffing is key, and we hire a lot of the community kids, so we get a lot of support from our community, um, especially a lot of uh, ladies help us in the kitchen and stuff, and because we're wholesaling our pies year-round, it also allows us to keep our core staff, which is really key in a, in a seasonal business. And once you've spent all the money on capital, you have to be open longer. It's one of those bad things. I mean, if you're going to spend it, then four-week season isn't long enough anymore to get that kind of money back on that. Um, quality, we think quality is key. And we have a reputation for quality, not that it's always, I mean, when the rain and the weather's come, it's, but, but striving hard to have quality. Um, word of mouth is key. Media. 
uh, free. We're on Global TV tonight. They're doing the story. That's great. You know, and those ones don't cost when you can do those kind. Uh, um, TV Pro, <coughs> Pro Joy TV. Um, Weather Channel loves to come out. Somehow we've been able to build a, re a, a relationship. So when there's almost strawberry season, they're calling. Oh, is there a story? You know, they always want the bad story, so we never give that. You know, we're always looking for the good. Um, but word of mouth and then the internet is is huge, right? Uh, Facebook. Constant contact. We we want people to become farm friends so that we can send out. We do three events that we invite them to. Those special people. We just did a Christmas pre-Christmas, so we just finished decorating. Everybody here, come on out for the evening. And you know we had a thousand people out for the for the evening, four hours. You know, so just to come and see what's new. <coughs> we buy a lot and give them a discount and that kind of stuff. Um, open longer. Uh, change. Our customers anticipate something new next year. Every year something, what, what's going to be new? The easiest is strawberry fields only last for three years, two, three years, right? So you're always changing your fields. At least something's changing, but they're always excited about, oh, I'm going to come to the farm. I don't know what happened there. And then the repeat customers. And um, I think a big part is building relationship. And, and that's part of this whole food -ish thing is is visual. I know you. You're my you're my farmer. Uh, I trust you. Because that's where I'm going to go for food. Especially when you hear bad press about issues on food. As long as we can stay clean, right? But but they trust us. And so, if you don't like people, don't go that way. That's for sure. You know, just sell it to the wholesaler. It's a lot easier. Let me tell you. But but we enjoy having the customers on, and we also enjoy when they leave. Because they're all over your property, but but there is a relationship and it's a lot of fun most of the time, right? And we're not an organic farm, but yes, you will get that question right away. And, uh, if you're organic, that's great. But to me, I want to use the whole whole box toolbox out there. I don't want to be labeled uh, stuck on only one solution. If I can, because I think there's really good man-made solutions out there as well as as all the organic solutions. But relationships are key. And we have a relationship with our distributor, we have a relationship with restaurants, and we go and eat at those restaurants and say, oh, hi, oh, wow, you know, it's just amazing how you can, farmers can talk to people out there. And um, the last thing that we're doing, uh, I mean, we're always thinking of new ideas, the last thing we're doing is we're creating a reason to come to our whole street. We're on the historic Otter 248 Street, that's the name we made up. And we have right now six six different farms or, or unique shops on our street. So you come to our farm, you get a bag, and it lists all these things, all these other farms you can come to. There's a turkey farm, so if you need your meat, there's Benetti's um, meat that will do uh, beef and everything else. There's a Kensington that has alpaca hides and furs and socks that they make all this kind of stuff. And there's another winery at the far end. And then there's a uh, Thunderbird Show Park, Horse Park. That's at the beginning of our street. So, and then uh, at Christmas, there's uh, five Christmas tree farms on our street. You know, so there's, we're trying to make, okay, yeah, you can spend a whole half day here. You can stop here, stop there, stop there. And it's like a grocery store, except it's spread out. Anyway, those are some of our ideas for branding. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. How did you deal with uh, land use laws? Do you have that problem up there for what you're doing? Okay, we're trying to do events now on our farm, mm -hmm. and we are we have a thing called agricultural land reserve, and it's controlled by the land commission, and it's about saving farmland, right? So you shouldn't just be doing anything. And fair enough, I, I agree with it 100 percent. Our philosophy is, hey, we're feeding people with the food we're making, so that, isn't that the point of agriculture? I thought it was. The reason why we're farming is to we've make food, that. right? We've tried that. Yeah, I know. And they say no. Yeah, you don't ask. I mean, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> you slowly, it's, it's a slow process. And um, the one line that we're struggling with right now is, um, they say, you can do events at your farm occasionally. You can do festivals and stuff, but you can't do weddings. Mm -hmm. That happened here. Yeah, here too. Oh, yeah. But then you go to... Uh, then you go to um, Washington State, uh, Snohomish, that whole area there, all they lost all their dairy farms. They all do weddings in their dairy farms. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, so we're not allowed to do weddings, so we're doing bombing events. 
Bonding events. So we don't do weddings, we will do an event, we will do a festival, we'll do a celebration, and don't call it a wedding then. I mean, what, what, is, what are we doing? We're feeding people. To, to us, we've set this, this line. 50% of what happens there is our food. I mean, we want to provide at least 51% of, of the revenue is coming from what we're using. We're not, we're not an event center, and we're not this. So part of the issue is um, assembly bylaw. You can't, you can't assemble people without proper sprinklers and proper, proper uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. So then tents aren't proper facilities, but there's lots of ways to get out of the tent. So we're, we're, it's a hard one. We just tried to do a licensed kitchen, and uh, our response back was, how do we know that you're using your product? It was stupid. That's and stupid. he's been fighting that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now move to Washington. The it's county. Really easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every county is different, isn't it? Yes. And, our, and that's the same thing. They started clamping down on, on some farms because we're allowed only 3,000 square feet of a farm market. But that's not the packing part. That's not this. And so, okay, we kind of play the, play the game. But in the end, I like the rule that 51% of everything I'm selling, and my, my gross margin, uh, my gross sales, is stuff I'm growing, and that's kind of the, the line The Department of Ed came out and said, no problem. Yeah. They have you checked with your county. Yeah. They were like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, it was, yeah. Well, usually what happens is you build small, and then you just... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really hard part. Well, they march right now.